Hey everyone, my name is Sean and happy Halloween to you wherever you are in the world and however you are choosing to spend your holiday weekend. Over here on the channel, I've been doing Halloween themed decks for Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy The Duelist Link Evolution and we are on to our final deck profile for the week and we are looking at Mayakashi. Mayakashi are a deceptively simple deck to play. They're not very, very difficult but they are kind of a combo uh, mid-range deck and they actually are fun to play as well. There are two ways you can play Mayakashis. You could try to do the mill method where you summon soul absorbing bone tower to the field and every time you summon a zombie monster because this deck does a lot of summoning uh, you can send the top two cards of your opponent's deck to the graveyard so you can try to deck them out that way but we're not going for that method there we're going for more a control based method so who are the mayakashis uh, they're human people who have spirits as uh, ghost monsters and they're very very much in line with ancient japanese kind of lore and uh, those kind of uh, spirits and uh, spooky ghosts and so they all have a counterpart in the synchro deck, uh, which they can all kind of tap into to do their biggest and baddest spirits. So, uh, the starters when the Mayakashi, if I pull it in order of level, uh, uh, the main start is Hygen. Hygen can summon out a Mayakashi from your deck when he is normal or special summoned. Uh, the counterpart to this also is Shafu, and we only play two of him, who can do the same thing but from your graveyard instead. Now, uh, one thing you need to know about all the Mayakashi monsters is while you have one of the baby Mayakashis, the main effect monsters on the field, that's Heijin, Shafu, uh, Daki, or um, Ayuki, Ayuki Masumi, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except Mayakashi monsters. Now, we do play some non-Mayakashi uh, monsters on the deck uh, in the deck, but if you want to access them, you have to get all your main deck monsters off the field before you can start using them. So Hygen's really great because Hygen can summon a Mayakashi from your deck and Shafu can summon one from your graveyard. But uh, however you choose to use these two cards, you eventually must get your way to summoning out Daki, the graceful Mayakashi. Ma uh, she is the main combo piece for the deck and how she works is anytime a, a Mayakashi monster is special summoned to your field from the extra deck, while this card is on the graveyard, she will come back to the field. So the way that you play this deck is you have Hygen, who's a level 1, and then Daki is a level 2, and then first you start off by summoning at your level 3. Daki will then come out, and then you've got a 3 on the field, and a 2, and then you can go to your 5, and then plus 2 will go into your 7, Tengu, and then you can go into your 9, which is Yoko, and then you can finally get to your level 11, which is Gashado Kiro, and uh, he is your biggest beat stick with 3,300 attack. Now, why are we dumping all these cards into the graveyard? Well, the Mayakashis uh, in, in, who are Synchro Monsters all have an additional effect and that when they are brought back from the graveyard, they get to do a bonus action. So, um, while they're on the field, they kind of uh, you summon them normally, they're just kind of like uh, vanilla monsters. They do have a protection effect where if a Synchro Monster in your possession whose original level is mm, is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect while this card is in the graveyard, you can banish one other zombie monster from your graveyard and if you do, special summon this card. Now the only um, the level it depends on uh, uh, is two plus the level of the original level of the monster. So Yoko can count anyone that's uh, weaker than Gashado Koro. Uh, Gashado Koro can only do it for leak monsters. Um, Yoko uh, goes up for level 11s, and then we have Tengu who does level nines. Uh, Suchigomo uh, does level sevens and uh, lower. And um, no, that's not how it works. <coughs> Hey everyone, my name is Sean and happy Halloween to you wherever you are in the world and however you are choosing to spend your season. Uh, over here on the channel I am doing Halloween themed decks for Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution and our final deck for this week is Mayakashi. We're going to be looking at this spooky archetype and, and building a control variant of this deck. Mayakashis have two different ways you can play them but we are going to be focusing on more a beatdown control deck uh, using their synchro monsters and their main deck monsters. So, who are the Mayakashis? Uh, your main Mayakashi starter is Hygen, the wing Mayakashi. When he is normal or special summoned, you can summon another copy from your deck. Now, a counterpart to him that's really good to know, or I have two of, is Shafu. Shafu can do the same thing as Hygen, but instead of doing it from your deck, he can do it from your graveyard. 
Now the main card that you want to get from your deck or your graveyard um, is you want to go for Daki. Daki is your main extender for the deck and every time you do a Synchro Summon or a Link Summon for your Maya Kashi card from your extra deck, uh, you can then summon her back to the field which means you can then use her again and again for your plays. This is really good because it allows you to Synchro Climb and then link uh, it off into other monsters and keep bringing her back to the field and that effect is not once per turn. So when uh, Daki is on the field and if you start off with say Hygen, Hygen is a level 1 and Daki is a level 2 so you have a 1 and a 2 and then that can summon out your level 3 Synchro and then you've got a 3 and a 2 and so then you can go into your level 5 Synchro and then you can keep on doing this, go to your 7, then you can go into your 9 and then you can go into your 11 and that's kind of where you stop and you end up with a board of your level 11 Gashadokoro and Daki on the field. Now if you have another extender you can then go into your link monsters after that and your main and uh, second extender for the deck is Yuki Masumi the Ice Mayakashi. She simply says if you control an Ice Mayakashi card other than herself you can special summon this card from your hand or your graveyard. Then when this card is special summoned um, you can also then send one zombie monster from your deck to the graveyard and this is great for loading your graveyard with copies of Mizuki because the whole point of your Mayakashi monsters is that they do something when they come back from the graveyard. So let's go into their details a little bit more. But before we do I have to point out that Mayakashi or the main deck monsters do say that while they are on the field you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except Mayakashi monster. So after you've done your little combo and you've done uh, gotten out most of the, your uh, extra deck cards that are Mayakashi, you want to link these cards off or send these cards to the graveyard in order to then unlock the rest of your extra deck and fulfill your whole uh, for, uh, use your whole um, arsenal against your opponent. So um, what do these cards actually do? Well, Obo Guru, um, uh, they all have one a similar effect. And that is when the higher level monster comes from um, is sent from the field to the graveyard, they can banish one other zombie monster uh, from their graveyard. And if you do special summon this card, so if uh, they start in backwards format, uh, actually start in this format, if um, Sujigomo was on the field and then it is sent to the graveyard, destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect, while Oboguruma is in the graveyard, you can banish the zombie to summon back Oboguruma. And then Suchigoma can do the same for Tengu. Tengu can summon itself back if Yoko goes to the graveyard. And then Yoko can summon itself back if Gashadokura goes to the graveyard. Now when these cards come back to the graveyard, they come back even more powerful than before because they come with a monster effect. And the final effect at the bottom is what they come back with. Gashadokura, when it comes back to, from the field to the, uh, from the graveyard to the field. Oh, uh, Gashadokura does it for your Link Monsters, by the way. So if one of your Link Monsters goes to the graveyard, you can then summon out, um, or any Link Monster, Go to the graveyard, you can then summon out Gashadokuro from your graveyard. When he does revive himself, or you summon him back through either your Book of Life, your Mizuki, your Monster Reborn, or even uh, your Mayakashi Metamorphosis, when he comes back from the graveyard, you can then make it so that uh, for the rest of the turn, all face up, uh, this face up card is unaffected by other card effects. Uh, Yoko can destroy a monster on the field, Tengu can destroy a spell and trap on the field, uh, Suchigoma can mill the top 3 cards of their deck, which is nice for another uh, way, way to play this deck. And then we have Obakuruma who can make it so that your monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. And uh, that is what they do. So they keep on climbing down and then down. And if your opponent manages to get through all of your cards and they get to Obakuruma, uh, he cannot be destroyed by battle. So he will sit on the field for a little while. Now, uh, for your Link Monsters, Yuki Ona. Yuki Ona is your Link 2. And you generally make her after doing all your... Uh, your, your synchro summons and you uh, after you've done all your synchro summons you end on the board with Daki and ideally your uh, Gashi Dokoro so you have one monster and another monster but you obviously don't want to use Gashi Dokoro for your link summon you want him to stay on the board because he's got 3300 attack so if you have another extender for example Yoko Masumi and you summon her to the field or you use one of your revival cards to summon another um, Mayakashi to the field then you can use her and uh, Daki to go into Yuki Ona now, uh, Yuki, Masumi does have another, Yuki Masumi has another threat, and that is when she is special summoned, you can send one zombie monster from your deck to the graveyard. This is a really great thing to set up, and you can set up things like sending Mizuki, so that you can immediately revive your cards from the graveyard to trigger their effects, without having to worry about them being destroyed by battle or card effect first. But, um, you can bring out Yuki Masumi, and then use your Daki with something like Yuki Yona, and she makes it so that, while she points to a Synchro Monster, your opponent's monster cannot target this card for attacks. And if a Synchro Monster is destroyed uh, by Battle or Card Effect while this card is on the field, you can target one face-up monster on the field and its attack and defense become half 
until the end of the turn. Uh, so she's kind of a little bit of a protection effect for you there. The bigger version of her though, of Yuki Ona, the Absolute Zero Mayakashi, um, she requires any number of zombie monsters, which is really good, uh, because that means you can uh, um, uh, you don't have to use your Mayakashi monsters like Yuki Ona, the Ice Mayakashi. This one can use like your Uni Zombie or your Jacka Bolin to summon her out. Uh, Yuki Ona says that if a monster is special summoned from the graveyard, you can target one monster on the field and change its attack to zero and negate its effects. So, um, and it negates any other activated effect of your opponent's banished cards as well. So that is in a nutshell what Mayakashis are. Uh, for the rest of the deck, we have some generic supports. We are playing the Uni Zombie engine with three Mizukis to send our cards to the graveyard. And then we have uh, double Shirinui Solitaire to summon out our level zeros, including Yuki uh, Daki, who's uh, got zero defense as well. Not our level zeros, but our zero defense zombies. And then we have Jack of Bolin as well in here. Because Jack of Bolin kind of can revive cards from the graveyard as well, although they will be banished after they're summoned with him. But he can also dump cards to the graveyard uh, via his effects as well. So that can help set up your place with things like Book of Life which can bring back a zombie monster from the graveyard. And we're playing Triple Core by the Grave to protect our combo, Cosmic Cyclone to help us go second, Foolish Burial, uh, our main uh, searcher is Mayakashi Return. This card can either add it to my hand or put it in the graveyard. So if you have Shafu in your hand, you can then send uh, your Hygen to the graveyard, summon Shafu, Sham Shafu will summon Hygen, and then Hygen will go for Daki. And then you've already got two cards on the field, uh, one extra extender on the field, which you can use later on to go into your Link Summon. And then we have uh, Mayakashi Metamorphosis. Uh, discard one card, target one of your Mayakashi monsters that is banished or in your graveyard, and special summon it. That opponent, your opponent cannot target with card effects for the rest of the turn, and you cannot summon from the extra deck except with Mayakashi monsters. So the non light Mayakashis we have in the extra deck are as follows. We have Shurinui Samurai uh, Saka, um, uh, Shurinui Squire, uh, Squire Saka, uh, Omega, and Trishula, and or, um, uh, Shurinui Sun Saka. Just some cards to help you uh, do some removal and uh, utilize your cards in a different way because Mayakashis, they're good and they're really, they're not good really. Well, they are good. They're fun in a way where they can, they're very self-sufficient, but they don't offer you a whole lot in the terms of protection. So when you do attack with them, you do want to be very, very aggressive against your opponent. And sometimes you need to destroy cards on the field in a different way. So these cards will help you deal with different threats. Before we go into today's gameplay, I do want to point out there is another way to play Mayakashis, and that is using this card here, Zol Absorbing Born Tower, Bone Tower. Um, every time a zombie monster is special summoned, you can mill top, the top two cards of your opponent's deck to the graveyard. This is the type of version where you're trying to uh, basically make your opponent deck out. And uh, if you can set up the combo, you can. Uh, this can be very successful uh, to do, but it's not very consistent, so I chose not to highlight it here in today's video. So let's go into action here and let's look at what Mayakashis can do as our final de uh, deck for our Halloween week and so we are playing against Ninja Skiller 44. So Mayakashis, they don't really want to go first to be honest with you, they want to go second. Going first is safe in a way where you can set up your combo a bit more reliably because your opponent will have interaction on the board. Um, so it is a bit safer in that sense but they don't really do anything in terms of say interacting with your opponent during their turn. So um, the only thing you can really do is play your trap card and then uh, revive one of your Mayakashi cards and then you can use one of their effects. And um, that can be useful but it's not the greatest thing, you re really just want to go second with this deck. So we use Shirinami Solitaire and we're going to uh, summon out as Uni Zombie and then we're going to use Uni Zombie's effect to discard one card from our hand. So we're going to get rid of Yuki Masumi and that will increase the level of Uni Zombie which means if we want to use him as a tune up uh, for a summon later on we could do so but Yuki Masumi works fine in the graveyard as well so it's not bad to send her to the graveyard and then we're going to use our um, second effect of Uni Zombie to send uh, Mizuki to the graveyard. So Mizuki will be set up and live to revive a card from the graveyard. This doesn't really set up our plays though, so we do need another card. So we're going to send another extender and we're going to use Foolish Burial to send Hygen to the graveyard. And now we're going to use Mizuki to revive our Hygen. Or Hagen. Hagen? Hagen, I believe. Hagen, probably. Um, so Hagen will hit the field and um, that will come out. And then Hagen's effect will trigger because it was special summoned. And then he will be able to summon a Mayakashi from our deck. And so we are going to go for our copy of Daki. Uh, so Ducky hits the field and now we've got a level 1 and a level 2 on the board. It's time to start the synchro nonsense. So we're going to first go off into Oburo Guru Guruma and Oburo Guruma hits the field. 
So there's our level 3. Level 3 hits the field. He's got 2100 defense. So summon him out in defense always. He's designed to stop battles and protect you, uh, uh, stop your opponent from attacking you directly. And then Ducky hits the field again. So she revives herself. And now we're going to go from um, Ducky into uh, Suji Gumo. And we're going to bring out the big spider synchro. Uh, Obaguruma and uh, Suji Gumo, I'll be honest with you, are not that good. I mean, uh, if you're playing the mill version of this deck, uh, Suji Gumo is a little bit better because you can mill cards from your opponent's deck to the graveyard. Uh, actually, both players' decks, but um, yeah, we're not playing that version, so he's not that good, really. Um, Tengu's not bad. Um, Tengu, when revived, does destroy a spell trap card on the field, so that is always helpful to do. So it turns our graveyard into a little bit of a toolbox where we can say do Mizuki, revive Tengu, pop a card on the field, and then you've got a 2600 card with a, an attack card on the field that you can attack with. Then we bring out Ducky again. Ducky's gonna hit the field, and then Ducky uh, and uh, Tengu is gonna go into Yoko. And this is the evolved version of um, Ducky. Ducky, uh, his counterpart is Yoko, whereas uh, Heijin is uh, um, Tengu. And um, Yuki Misumi is for Yuki Ona. And there's one more, uh, Shafu. Shafu is um, Aburo, Aburo uh, the level 3 one. So uh, they all have a little bit of a counterpart. And then Gashadokuro is just his own kind of beast. He's, uh, he's a very scary looking skeleton. Uh, reminds me a lot of um, what's that game uh, Sekiro. Reminds me a lot of the monsters you fight in Sekiro. So um, now we've got to our level 11. We fully link climbed up. We summon Daki to the field again, and so that is the end of the synchro chain. But uh, we now want to use Daki for something because she's vulnerable. We don't want to just leave her on the field. So we're going to bring back Yuki Masumi, and then Yuki Masumi uh, will then send one card from our deck to the graveyard. So we're going to mill another copy of Mizuki because he's always just good to have. Him and Jack Bolin, they really help uh, fuel this deck a little bit more because they can revive your zombie, your Mankashis, without having to actually worry about um, them being destroyed by card effects or battle. Now, I think I made a mistake here. <laughs> uh, you want Yuki Ona to actually point to your Synchro Monster. And if I remember, I summoned it to the wrong, wrong zone, which is a bit of a mess up. Because uh, when she uh, is pointing to a Synchro Monster, she cannot be attacked. And you kind of want her to stay on the field for a while, so... Um, uh, make sure you summon it to the right one, um, not the actual right zone, but the, the right zone for you. And um, but that's uh, that's okay. That's not too bad. Um, she doesn't do a whole lot, to be honest with you. She's uh, it's not like she's got like a negate or a, a disruption effect that can really really happen in the your opponent's turn. So what is our opponent playing? And let's see, can we deal with them? Gashidokuro is obviously a three thousand three hundred attack monster. Very very big card to deal with. But doesn't do a whole lot. He um, he just kind of is strong. He's just a big attack monster, really. And our opponent is playing sub terrors, and sub terrors could be very difficult for a deck like this to deal with. Sub terrors are very, very good. So uh, a deck like this can be very, very challenging. Uh, so he attacks only to Uni Zombie. I think that was a smart idea. Uni Zombie will destroy, uh, get destroyed, and that is one of our main engine cards. But as you can see, we have another Uni Zombie in our hand, and he flips over our uh, big skeleton boy and then he goes into the end phase i thought this was a really weird term um if he has sub terra Phoenix in his hand maybe he uh shouldn't actually flip his card face down but he already has his final battle so this is fine so final battle is an amazing trap card and it has four different effects and the effect he's going to use right now is going to flip up his uh sub terra guru and that is actually going to trigger its effect to do another search from his deck and such a final battle is so good because it sets itself back down to the field and you actually don't lose a card of it for it. He then goes and searches out sub Behemoth and uh, Behemoth is a really good card. And now we're going to play Mayakashi Return to search a card from our deck. But our opponent is going to respond with sub Phoenix. Um, so sub Phoenix is going to flip down his Guru and negate the activation of my card. And that is a bit unfortunate because that is our main searcher for our deck. Now that a card was flipped face down, he can then summon out Subterra Behemoth. And Subterra Behemoth is very scary. Every time he is flipped face up, uh, he has the effect to banish one monster in the field. And we don't want that to happen. So we're going to have to find a way to deal with this. Now the fortunate thing for us is we know every single one of our opponent's cards. And he's already used Guru effect. He's already done Phoenix, which is his main negate. Behemoth is face up, so we don't have to worry about his effect. And then we know what his face down card is. 
Playing Robin Goblin in here, by the way, is a cool idea. I like that idea about playing Robin Goblin. Uh, Robin Goblin uh, uh, makes it so that anytime you do battle damage to your opponent, you discard one card from their hand. And with their uh, with these cards, they have uh, subterrors. They have a lot of defense, so it's very uh, common that your opponent will attack into them. And if you don't negate the attack with, say, the Hidden City, you can make your opponent take damage, and then they have to discard. So that's really, really kind of cruel. <laughs> I think that's a really good idea. But we, what we did just now is prepare Mizuki to summon out Tengu, and Tengu hit the field and destroyed his sub terra final battle because we don't want uh, to deal with that card again, even though it won't be able to activate again this turn. If we don't win this turn, um, it's just another way to extend his play, so we don't want that card. And then we're going to use um, our uni zombie again to send another copy of Mizuki. Mizuki gets so much good use. Mizuki's put in a lot of work this week <laughs> with vampires, with skull servants, with... Um, uh, what other deck did we play? We did not in Evil Eye. Um, I'm forgetting a zombie deck. Holy crap! How am I forgetting another zombie deck that we recorded? Um, Skull Servant. We did Skull Servant, Vampire. Um, I can't remember. I'm going blank. I'm, I must be tired. I must be really, really tired from uh, walking with the dead this week. Um, we did. Oh, I'm going to look this up. I'm sorry. I can't believe I'm forgetting what we actually recorded. Ghost Trick, of course, Ghost Trick. Uh, yeah, um, um, Mizuki doesn't help Ghost Trick at all, but um, he he works a lot for a lot of zombie decks, and we did zombies last week, I think, as well. So um, this is it. This is all they are. We summoned big monsters back from the graveyard. Our, uh, we summoned back Yoko, who destroyed a card in the field, and that's it. They're not a really complicated deck. They have a long combo, and they look like they're really fancy, but they're not. They're actually really, really quite linear, and they're less. And they've got less depth, in my opinion, than, say, a regular zombie deck. But that is my Akashis. They're fun. They're a fun zombie deck, and I thought they'll be fun, a fun way to end this Halloween week. So, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this week of jank and this week of uh, playing some funsy decks. Uh, next week, we're going back to our regular schedule. And, um, yeah, hopefully you guys tune in for those future videos. Currently working on a tier list of the best cards in the game, and that should be up within the next week or so. But... Regardless of how we, you spent your day, I hope you've all had a wonderful week and happy Halloween again to you all. I'll see you soon. Take care.